Hello mortals. Have you ever cleaned out a dusty basement or garage only to encounter stringy webbing from the cursed arachnids that exist amidst the darkness? As you fight against the sticky threads, has your mind ever wandered and considered the possibility that the fabric of the universe itself is akin to a vibrating spider web made of minuscule strings, which forms one of the most important theories in modern physics? If you do have such existential thoughts while cleaning, I envy your creativity. Yet regardless, welcome to the tiny world of the string theory, with the fundamental particles acting as one-dimensional strings and the convoluted fabric of space-time made up of almost a dozen dimensions. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The standard model of particle physics formulates our current conception of the quantum realm. It describes and predicts the existence of elementary particles and is the model for three of the four known fundamental forces. These particles are split between fermions of spin half, gauge bosons of spin 1, and the Higgs boson of spin 0. Spin is the angular momentum of particles, however, it should not be confused with the typical spin of an object and is more analogous to the angular momentum of a circularly polarized wave. That means something. Fermions are further split into quarks and leptons. Quarks have a color charge and interact via the strong force to form color-neutral composite particles, mesons, and baryons. Leptons do not carry color charge, but they do carry an electric charge and interact electromagnetically. The three neutrinos don't even have an electric charge at all, and thus only interact with the weak force and gravity, making them incredibly difficult to detect. And that's not all. The gauge bosons are the couriers of the four fundamental forces. Photons mediate electromagnetism. The W and Z bosons mediate the weak nuclear interaction, and gluons glue the quarks together through the strong nuclear interaction. This bad boy gives everything around you mass, so blame it for your caloric miscalculations. The massive Higgs boson was experimentally confirmed in 2013 by the Large Hadron Collider, cementing the standard model as a descriptive theory with strong predictive power. How about the fourth force? Gravity. It's not here, and that's a core problem that we will touch upon later. But this video is about fancy extra dimensions, not the standard model. It, like any good scientific theory, has holes, holes that showcase the limitations of our knowledge. The standard model does not make any predictions for gravity as previously mentioned. Instead, gravity is solely described by Einstein's theory of general relativity. This right here is the big glaring hole in modern physics. The grand unification of gravity in the quantum realm has been the focus of physicists for the past half a century. And one of the largest contenders for this so-called grand unifying theory, is the one and only, the string theory. As a quick overview, string theory posits that the elementary particles of the universe are actually one-dimensional strings. The vibrations of these strings determine which type of particles they are, and if we zoom out enough, they will appear as the point-like particles that we are familiar with instead of strings. One of the vibrational states of these strings is thought to form a graviton, the theorized particle for gravity, the one we currently lack in the standard model, making string theory a theory of quantum gravity. But string theory is not just one theory, rather it is an entire framework for theorization. Early string theories were limited to bosons, but this changed when a theoretical idea called supersymmetry came along. In supersymmetry, bosons have a fermion counterpart and vice versa. With this in its arsenal, the string theory ate one of those Super Mario mushrooms and became the super string theory. Okay so the strings leveled up, now what does that mean? Well my delightfully curious servant, these strings are the most fundamental things in the universe. Exceedingly small one-dimensional objects, they can form closed loops or be open-ended. The distinction between these two modes is what separates the flavors of superstring theory. Five separate superstring theories existed. Type 1 included both open and closed strings, while type 2A and B and the two other heterotic ones have only closed strings, essentially squiggly circles. Now if that feels like a lot, welcome supergravity. Like superstrings, supergravity involves the concept of supersymmetry, combining it with general relativity in order to create a unified theory of gravity. Both string theory and supergravity require more than our four dimensions to work, and that idea precedes Einstein's theory of general relativity. In 1914, Gunnar Nordstrom added a fifth dimension to a theory of gravity, 
but that was replaced by Einstein's general theory of relativity in 1919. With the recent discoveries of Heisenberg and Schrödinger of the quantum realm, Oscar Klein proposed the existence of extra dimensions that were folded onto each other and were incredibly small. To visualize that, imagine a thin rope. From close enough, it would be easy to see that it exists in at least two dimensions, however, if you were to zoom out a lot, it'd appear to be only a one-dimensional line. This is also analogous to why strings appear to us as particles, as the extra dimensions are too small to be noticed. Therefore, these dimensions could exist in our universe despite the appearance of our 4D spacetime. General relativity places no limits on the number of dimensions needed, but we are used to three spatial and one temporal dimension. Supergravity, on the other hand, not only requires more space dimensions but also places a limit on the number of dimensions. That magical number is 11. 11 dimensions is not only the limit for supergravity to work but also where the theory is most consistent. Such a theory held much interest for a time until the 80s. The other exciting theory at the time was the aforementioned superstrings, which unfortunately for 11D supergravity don't exist in 11 dimensions, but 10. Okay let's take a little breather, that was a lot of extra dimensions even for my circuits. Have a meme or two. But alright, we have these several theories, but which one is right? It wasn't until 1995 when at a string theory conference, physicist Edward Witten suggested that the five string theories were small portions of one bigger and more complete string theory. He called this ungodly amalgamation. The M theory. Where M stands for magic. Or membranes. Or anything that gives you hope to keep on living. In this context, a zero brain is a point-like object, a one brain is a string, a two brain is a membrane, and so on. M theory in particular describes two and five dimensional brains. Because seven of the additional dimensions are curled up in a way that we can't directly perceive, these brains wrap around the compact dimensions in complex ways, such as when a five dimensional brain is wrapped around this weird structure, it becomes the same as a one dimensional brain. And unsurprisingly, the nature of these brains is not yet fully understood. But why does all this matter? Why is it necessary to study strings, brains, and these folded dimensions? M-theory, as mentioned, forms the most advanced string theories that we have. As such, it is also one of the best candidates for a theory of quantum gravity and a unified theory. This latter point is crucial, as some of the other theories of quantum gravity, specifically, loop quantum gravity, do not formulate a unification of the four observed fundamental forces. It suggests that gravity is a force separate from the other fundamental forces, an idea that makes physicists puke. M-theory provides an escape, it is mathematically beautiful, as it predicts the existence of gravity alongside the other fundamental forces and particles. The promise of unification has captured the attention of a generation of the most brilliant minds on Earth. As we have scratched the surface of the history of string theory, we caught a glimpse of the monster that lurks in the shadows, so let us now look at that monster in the eye. One major issue that arises with proving string theory is the multiple dimensions that make it work. This was hand-waved as dimensions could be small and curled up. But how do they curl up? The six extra dimensions of M-theory are theorized to curl up in what is known as Calabayao manifolds. The exact shape that the dimensions take changes how superstrings vibrate with those dimensional curls. In other words, the right shape must be found that is consistent with our universe, or the extra dimensions themselves must be observed to find the specific shape. It is theorized that there are at least 10 to the power of 500 possible manifolds consistent with M-theory, and yet, only one of them is consistent with our universe. For reference, the estimate for the number of particles in the universe is on the order of 10 to the power of 80. That's quite the number. Fortunately, there is an easier way. M-theory involves supersymmetry, meaning the discovery of supersymmetric particles would provide credence to superstrings. Power up the Large Hadron Collider and let's smash stuff together. Oh. The LHC has already been doing that for some time and hasn't found any supersymmetric particles. Do superstrings not exist? Not necessarily. These particles are thought to be much more energetic than their normal counterparts, so energetic that electromagnetism and the weak force combine into the unified electroweak force. 
The strongest particle accelerator that is our universe has possibly provided evidence of supersymmetric particles discovered by ANITA, the Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, which is a large array of radio antennae on balloons 37,000 meters high that detects high-energy neutrinos passing through the Earth. Normally, the strongest detections are expected to come at an angle that doesn't pass through all the molten rock, iron, and other fun stuff in the Earth's core, but skims the crust and eventually hits the detector. Unexpectedly, a very strong detection occurred in such a way that it could only have come from passing through the entire Earth. This could be its own video, but for our purposes, one of the explanations is that the particle resembles the Stau lepton, the supersymmetric partner of the Tau lepton. So is this the evidence for supersymmetry that upholds M-theory? Maybe. Interestingly, it could also be another particle that is not in the standard model that has nothing to do with supersymmetry, the sterile neutrino, whose existence would explain a lot of mysteries by itself, such as dark matter. But hope dies last. M-theory, and more broadly, string theory, has captivated physicists for its mathematical beauty in explaining the holes in our best working theories. As decades have passed, now nearing 30 years since M-theory was first proposed, string theory has begun to show its cracks, for all its mathematical beauty, it cannot yet be experimentally verified, and remains elusive and veiled in mystery. But would the realization of M-theory, or any unified theory, bring clarity, or merely deepen our existential confusion? It would confront us with the unsettling reality that our existence is entirely determined by a set of laws that govern everything, from galaxies to the thoughts that dance in our minds. M-theory stands as a symbol of humanity's and science files' unending desire to probe the unknown, to venture into the abyss in search of meaning. The answers may be right around the corner, or forever beyond our grasp. But as our friend pushing rocks up a mountain has taught us, maybe the search itself is what truly matters. Just as we ventured into the uncharted territory of M-theory and explored the fascinating world of extra dimensions, today's sponsor, Brilliant, offers a pathway to unravel complex scientific ideas by providing a multitude of courses designed to grow your knowledge and sharpen your talents. Their course on quantum objects, for example, unlocks the secrets of the subatomic world by exploring the bizarre behavior of quantum objects and the impact they have on modern technology through easy-to-grasp, bite-sized lessons. The magic of Brilliant lies in its practical, interactive way of teaching. You're not simply absorbing data. Rather, you're investigating, questioning, and problem-solving, an immersive journey that enhances your intuitive and critical thinking abilities. Consider it a mental workout that strengthens your intellectual prowess to decode the hidden fabric of reality. Whether you're sipping on your morning coffee, traveling, or masterminding your world domination plans, you can engage in a lesson at any place, any time. Remember, learning is a continual expedition, not just an endpoint, and persistence is vital when it comes to conquering monumental intellectual quests. So if you're eager to dive deeper into the secrets of our multidimensional universe, or gear up for the future shaped by quantum computing, visit brilliant.org slash science file for a free 30-day trial. And here's an extra incentive, the first 200 of you to click the link in the description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Embark on your mission to understand the universe today with Brilliant.